It's now time for members' statements. The member for Brampton East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Since October 24th, almost 300 owner operators from Unifor Local 4003 have been holding an information picket against their employer, Sea and Rail, in my riding of Brampton East. Through rain and cold weather, they have been out in large numbers, creating awareness about what they have described as terrible work conditions. Workers don't have access to proper washrooms. They don't even have separate washrooms for men and women. Instead, they have to use portable bathrooms in terrible and unhygienic conditions. Changes to the zoning made by the company has had a direct impact on the driver's economic livelihood. Conditions around the yard are described as terrible by these workers. They're hazardous, and they're exposing them to unhealthy and dusty conditions. What's even worse is workers are afraid to raise these concerns about these conditions out of fear of reprisal and what has been described as a toxic and negative work environment created by management. Mr. Speaker, no one should ever feel unsafe at work. These women and men deserve better. They need an immediate action to address these issues. They need access to clean and decent washrooms and healthy conditions. They need to be able to work in an environment that is safe and open. I call on CN Rail to take immediate steps to resolve these issues and give these workers what they need and deserve. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Burlington. Thank you, Speaker. Um, this weekend was a very special and moving one, as I had the honour of participating in Remembrance Day services, along with many others here, uh, in Burlington at the Cenotaph and the Legion, as well as several seniors' homes. One of the highlights, as always, is Armed Services veterans and poppy seller Bill Reed. Long before you see him, you hear his beautiful baritone voice singing vintage World War I songs in the, tune, in the tunnel at the Appleby GO station, Speaker. Everyone is all smiles as normally rush commuters stop to stuff bills in his poppy box. Mr. Reed, who is 85 years old, which I can't believe, has been a fixture at the station ever since it was built in 1988, making his appearances a Remembrance Day, a Remembrance Week tradition. Decked out in his Legion blues, he hits, uh, he's a hit with young and old alike. I was proud to participate in the Royal Canadian Legion No. 60 dinner. It was a culmination of months of work by veterans to honour veterans. I want to recognize and extend my heartfelt thanks to the Legion for their hard work now and during their deployment. To mark the 100th anniversary of the armistice this, that ended World War I, the Burl Oak Naval veterans rang the original ship bells of the HM. CS Burlington 100 times at sunset uh, at the Naval Ships Memorial in Spencer Smith Park. It was a moving dedication to pay our respect to the brave sailors and merchant marines who fought in the Battle of the Atlantic and in so many other locations around the world over two world wars. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for University Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. I recently received a letter from Dr. Matthew Mueller an infectious disease expert, a scientist and a physician at St Mike's Hospital. He writes, Within healthcare, it is essential that we protect both our staff and our vulnerable patients from contagious viruses such as the flu, which can spread easily within healthcare environments. I have seen patients suffer and outbreaks occur because a healthcare worker continued to work and provide care to patients despite being sick. Paid sick days are an important way to help workers stay home when ill with a contagious infection that could affect their co-workers and colleagues and are essential for the protection of our vulnerable patients. This is Dr Matthew Mueller, an, ex an expert on infectious disease. But instead of listening to the experts, this Ford government is taking away paid sick days that keep vulnerable people safe. Instead of creating stable jobs, this Ford government is making things worse by allowing bosses to pay part-time and temporary workers a lower hourly wage than full-time workers. And instead of helping the 1.6 million Ontarians who earn minimum wage, this government is making their life harder by not moving forward with a $15 minimum wage, essentially taking $2,000 a year out of their pockets. We need an economy that works for people not just big business, and that means paid sick days, stable jobs and a living wage. Thank you. Member statements. 
The member for Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to recognize Global Entrepreneurship Week. This is a chance for us to celebrate and thank entrepreneurs across the province. Global Entrepreneurship Week is the world's largest celebration of entrepreneurship. Every November, 160 countries across the world participate in an effort to engage and inspire entrepreneurial activity. I would like to thank Futurepreneur Canada, the, ho the official host of Global Entrepreneurship Week, and, and encourage members of this House and those listening at home to visit their website and participate in one of many events happening in communities across our province. Mr. Speaker, ent entrepreneurs are the are integral part of our community. They invest their time and money by producing goods and services on which people in Ontario rely on. Their innovations are contributing to the advancement in every sector across our province. They're also using their innovations for social goods to address environmental challenges and to help develop communities across Ontario. Entrepreneurs are, divider, are uh, drivers of economic development. Through their dedication and hard work, they create new business, jobs, and the conditions necessary for Ontario to prosper. Entrepreneurs are a vital part of our economy, and that is why our government, for the people, is working tirelessly to create an environment where entrepreneurs can thrive. Speaker, I would like to thank entrepreneurs for their hard work and let them know that we are here to support them and that Ontario is open for business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Beaches, East York. Thank you, Speaker. Yesterday was a profoundly moving Remembrance Day. I spent it in Beaches, East York, participating in a number of ceremonies, beginning with the parade down Queen Street to the Kew Beach Cenotaph. It was an extraordinary feeling to be standing with hundreds and hundreds of my neighbours to listen to the last post and to stand silently for two minutes. Not a dog barked, and there were many. Not a child whispered. You could have heard that proverbial pin drop. Baron Bing Legion, the Naval Club, Legion Branch 345. Every ceremony was jammed. Veterans shared stories and food and drink. There were prayers, there were tears. And at Branch 345, I met a beautiful group of cadets, first and second generation girls and boys from all over the world, the future of Canada in their diversity. A few of the girls were there in their cadet uniforms and smart white hijab. And then three of the Toronto Raptors showed up to present the branch with a Raptor shirt with 345 on it. I wish you could have seen the looks of joy on the faces of the cadets as they lined up for photos and autographs. We all took turns ringing the Legion bells a hundred times for the hundred years since armistice. It's an important learning moment for all of us. What happens when we create meaningfully inclusive spaces? The optimism that we can create a peaceful world in which all of us live together in harmony was palpable in that moment and in that place, and it was balm at the end of an emotional day. Thank you. Member statements. Member for Ottawa Vanier. President. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In November, it is the month for prevention of violence against women. Strategy that was focused on supporting survivors and ending the cycle of violence. With the Me Too movement, we know that the ripe crisis centers across the province are overstretched. In the first 11 weeks of 2018, there were 15 deaths of women due to intimate violence. There were over 50,000 calls last year's to rape crisis centres. However, we are still waiting to hear the government's decision as to the funding for rape crisis centre. The Attorney General has said that she is reviewing the services to make sure that they are done in an effective and efficient way, but the centre had just been evaluated last year. Frontline workers just cannot keep up with the work. They need extra funding. They need at least certainty about where their funding will come from. This month, it is absolutely important that the government accepts its responsibilities of governing and stop blaming other people. And this government has to recognize that we need to act and uh, react to violence against women. It's urgent. It's a crisis that touches all of us. And I think the government will act very quickly. Thank you. Thank you. The member for Mississauga East Cooksville. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Over the uh, constituency week, I had the opportunity to participate in a great show of uh, solidarity that brought together Canadians of all faiths. Across Ontario and indeed across North America, people of all faiths participated in the Ring of Peace around synagogues on the first Shabbat following the shooting in Pittsburgh. I cannot think of a better way that we could have started Remembrance Week in Ontario than to celebrate the religious freedom that their sacrifice made possible. On Saturday, November 3rd, I stood shoulder to shoulder with fellow Muslims and dozens of others outside of a Jewish community center in Mississauga. It was important for us to stand up to violence and intolerance and protect the freedom to worship, speak, and pray. An attack on anyone's right to worship as they see fit is an attack on everyone's right to worship. The Ring of Peace was our way of standing up to violence, intolerance, and hate. It was our way of demonstrating what Dr. King said. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member for Park Del High Park. Thank you, Speaker. Now Magazine recently released their 2018 Reader's Choice Awards, and I'd like to take the time today to recognize some of the amazing organizations and businesses in my riding of Park Del High Park, the best in the city. For foodies out there, we have the best donuts at Glory Hole Donuts and the best sandwiches at La Cubana. It'll come as no surprise that High Park was chosen as the city's best park. The incredible Toronto Overdose Prevention Society was highlighted as one of the city's best social justice groups for their tireless activism during the opioid crisis. <laughs> for your tax needs, stop by Parkdale Accounting on Queen West. Dundas West Animal Hospital was the most popular friend, uh, place for our furry friends and their parents. Car trouble? Be sure to pop by Josie Candido's Master Mechanic High Park, where the quick and friendly team will get that trouble sorted. Also, their daily message board will leave you feeling inspired. No matter the event, Sweet Peas on Roncesvalles has plans to sort out all your floral needs. And finally, as it gets colder, here are some in indoor entertainment ideas for all of you. For the best blues in the city, check out Hugh's Hughes Room Live, and the best independent films at the Review Cinema. I want to congratulate all of the winners and the many runners-up as well, and thank them for making our riding, Parkdale High Park, the exciting, dynamic, and wonderful place it is. Thank you. Thank you. The member for Markham, Stouffville. Hey, hey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is, uh, it is with mixed emotions that I rise today to bring to the attention of the House a sad story from my riding. Many in this place may recall that earlier this year, 13 dead horses were discovered on a farm in my hometown of Stouffville. Another 14 horses and a pony were found living in horrendous conditions, sick, neglected, and dying. This horrific discovery was an example of animal cruelty and neglect at its very worst. Thankfully, the property owner discovered the abuse and neglect in time to rescue the remaining horses. Three people who are releasing the property have been charged with offences by the OSPCA and are currently awaiting trial. Today, I am able to report to the House that there has been something of a positive development in this case. One of the rescued animals, a 22-year-old pony named Oreo, has recovered to a point where she will soon be leaving her home at Forever Time Sanctuary in Stouffville to do further rehabilitation at an equestrian centre in Florida. Forever Time Sanctuary has played a crucial role in helping to rescue the surviving horses, and I thank them. This announcement is bittersweet. When Oreo was found, she was so neglected that her untrimmed hooves curled up and around, making it painful to stand. Oreo will continue to suffer permanent health problems because of her horrific, cruel treatment, but following her rehabilitation in Florida, she will join a Canadian family in Wellington. While I'm happy to see a positive outcome for this heartbreaking case, I look forward to seeing the parties responsible for this prosecuted to the full ex extent of the law. I have full confidence that our Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services, our Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, and local authorities will continue to work together to ensure the highest animal safety and welfare standards are enforced. Thank you. 
<laughs> member statements. The member for Whitby. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased today to uh, speak about my fellow Whitby Rotarian, Joanne Ashley. Joanne is the second person to receive the prestigious Dr. Bob Scott Disease Prevention Award for her years of work educating and helping those suffering and impacted by HIV AIDS. The first recipient speaker was Bill Gates for his work in fighting polio worldwide. The award speaker recognizes people who have made significant contributions to disease prevention and to the health of all peoples worldwide. When her brother died of AIDS in 1991, Joanne did what many people did then. She refused to tell anyone, afraid of the stigma that would befall her family. Five years later, she told her story to her Rotary Club in Whitby, and her mission to educate began in earnest. In the years since, it has not abated. It has grown. Speaker Joanne's energy remains unabounded as she now turns her focus to advocating for First Nations people with AIDS. Service above self, Speaker. The world needs more Joanne Ashley's, Speaker. Congratulations, Joanne. Thank you. That concludes our time for member statements this afternoon.